But the key trends that we are finding is that um, mobile internet is uh, taking off. And surprisingly, it's not policy or regulation that caused this trend, but um, user-generated content like YouTube and Facebook and other social networking that uh, brings young people to the internet. And in Africa, we've seen that maybe over the last five, six years, there hasn't been really uh, any increase in the number of internet users due to limitations. And these limitations are access to electricity at home, uh, cost of a computer, and also the ability to use and maintain a computer. The mobile phone bridges all these of these three. First of all, you don't need electricity at home. You can charge it on the roadside or in a shop. You, it's much easier to use. And it's also uh, prepaid and uh, therefore overcome the, the, uh, the difficulties that one would have with, with having a computer and fixed broadband. Where you need to have a salary, you need to have an address, you need to own a property, and poor people normally don't qualify for any of those. So the mobile phone bridges major obstacles, and therefore suddenly we see a boom of tripling and quadrupling of uh, user internet subscribers. And we um, interviewed students in one of the poorer neighborhoods in Bentuk and asked them what they used um, the mobile internet for. And they said they are browsing uh, cases. They were law students on the internet using a mobile phone. And that uh, intrigued me and I was wondering why. Isn't there access in the university? And they said like, yes, there is access, but you have to book a computer. It takes maybe about an hour to, that you have them on the computer. Then you get viruses, it's very slow. It's a very complicated process, so they rather read law cases on a very small screen on their mobile phone because it's more convenient than having to go to the university and do it there. And you have access all the time to it. It would seem that uh, internet access through mobile um, amongst the, the, the poorest of the poor is not happening to the same extent in uh, South Asia as it is in Africa. Now, of course, the, the leader in this area is, uh, is China. For, for sure, that, the, that's a booming sector uh, for them. But in South Asia, for some reason, there are still some, some bottlenecks uh, for that. And yet in Africa, it is growing. And so that's, that's a bit of a surprise. Um, but uh, another issue is just around the regulatory uh, environment that tends to spur access or not. And here's where Latin America is a bit of a, of a surprise case, because in Latin America, costs of uh, mobiles are much uh, higher than in um, Africa or Asia, which leads the poor amongst, in Latin America to actually have much higher expenditures on mobile than in the other regions. And that seems to be linked to the regulatory environment. There's a, there's essentially a duopoly in, in Latin America with very big uh, international uh, operators who seem to be having a, a role in ensuring that prices are much higher than anywhere else. So if anything, hopefully the, this kind of research can help to inform that situation and ensure that ICTs become more affordable in Latin America.